so taking sort of on board what you've experienced and then obviously diving a bit further in and understanding the nuances of, of more specific Swedish dialectual stuff, yeah. what advice would you have for people who were in a similar position to you that are trying to now learn this other, you know, dialect or slang or, you know, more specific stuff? Um, well, I guess the first piece would be that if if you're going to move to Australia or if you have moved to Australia, then maybe take this attitude, even though this doesn't matter in the long term, but like for now, take an attitude that you're you're trying to learn Australian, you're not trying to learn English. Because if you have the attitude that you're trying to learn English, then you'll count any content you get in English as being like part of like your practice. So you'll be like, oh, you know, I watched an American movie. So that that kind of counts. But like, well, if you could already understand that, then um, that did, that doesn't really do anything for your practice. Um, or, or even if it was difficult to understand, it really only helped you understand that that movie. Well, you've you've gone to the gym and it's like, it's deadlift day and you're like, ah, but I'm good at push-ups. I'm just going to keep doing push-ups and hope my deadlifts get better in their own terms. You know? Exactly. Yeah, (laughs) exactly. Uh, so I would, I would take an approach that you're trying to learn Australian English. Um, and, and there's not, it's not really going to matter if you only end up learning Australian English, because that's not really possible. Like, Firstly, yeah. you probably already learnt quite a lot of British and American English. But secondly, if you really do get that good at Australian English, then it's really just a couple of things you need to learn about American and British English before you'll be able to understand them as well. When well, the majority um, of the stuff you'll learn in Australian English, apart from the odd slang word and obviously acclimating to the accent and, yeah. and stuff, is applicable in all other areas of English. I can communicate with Americans and British people, you know, like... Yeah it's so you're not it's not a waste of your time and it's almost like you're being efficient you're doubling up because you're getting this top layer of accent exposure slang exposure but you're also reinforcing the english that you've already learnt by by using australian materials as opposed to using british or american materials right yeah and the other thing is if it it makes a lot of sense if you see it from the other way around so most people will acknowledge that it's not a good idea to try and learn two languages at once or three languages at once or five or six, especially if they're both, if you start them both from scratch. So if you start... Simultaneously. Uh, learn, yeah, if yeah, if you start trying to learn French and uh, Dutch on the same day. Or Swedish. Then, yeah, or, or anything, <laughs> yeah. Well, I didn't start them on the same day, to be fair. I did study Swedish first, but... Um, I'm being cheeky there because I wanted yeah. to prompt you to kind of talk about your um, experience doing that, but uh, keep yeah. going, keep going. Yeah, so if you see it as that, like, okay, it's a really bad idea to try and learn two or three languages at the same time, then it's actually, in the same way, a really good idea to only try and learn one part of one language at a time. Like, how easy would it be for me to tell you five ways that you can say how are you in Swedish right now. It would actually be pretty easy. Like you, you, I'm sure you would have the confidence to say, yeah, I could learn that in the next half an hour or whatever. Whereas if I tried to say, I'm going to tell you all the greetings and all the ways to say how are you and all the ways to respond to that in the next half an hour, then you'd be like, well, I'm never going to remember that. So instead of trying to learn English, which is this huge, I put that in quotes for people listening, um, this, you know, this massive thing spoken by a huge number of people across the whole globe, just trying to learn Australian English is, is kind of maybe two thirds the size of that job, which is yeah. already more manageable. And then even focusing down even more, it gets a little bit tricky when you try and focus on, you know, because you can't help what people say. So you can't, if, if someone says something you don't understand, you're going to be like, sorry, what did you just say? And then by definition, you're trying to learn that thing. So it's yeah. sort of not up to you exactly what you're going to learn, but it's at least up to you to say, I'm not going to learn British English or American English. That is your choice. Well, and I think you have to work out what's going to help you the most, right? It's kind of like Pareto principle stuff where yeah. you need to spend 80% of your time focusing on um, the 20% that's going to have the biggest effect in your life. And so yeah. if you're living in Australia currently 
and you're trying to get a job here, you're trying to, you know, you've got a partner here who's Australian as well, or you've got a lot of friends who are Australian, it's not going to really help you that much to learn, um, you know, watch Game of Thrones and have to wrap your head around all these British accents. Yeah. When ultimately, whenever you leave your house, you're having to use Australian English and, and understand the slang and everything. And so you have to work out where's the lowest hanging fruit? What's the easiest stuff that I can focus on and get the most out of? And then your life gets easier, right? It gets, yeah. it actually gets simpler. Yeah. And then, but then also not being afraid to like climb the tree, so to speak, once you get the low hanging fruit, because it's like, you know, I, I know this Venezuelan girl who, um, her English doesn't seem to have improved in the last, like quite a number of years. And I think it's just because she, she can kind of say all the things she needs to say, yeah. even though sometimes we have difficulty understanding her and I'm sure she doesn't understand everything we're saying. Um, but I think it's just because she's like, oh, well, I, I've, I've gotten to this point now. So it's, you know, it's not improving for her because she's only doing the same things. Well, it's the intermediate plateau, right? Which is an interesting yeah. concept because a lot of people think it's like, oh, this is where stuff gets hard in terms of learning yeah. the language and pushing through. But I think a yeah. lot of the time it's actually the inverse where things have gotten too easy yeah. that now you don't have to push as hard. Yeah. And so you don't as a result, like you, your, your comfort zone has effectively covered the majority of whatever it is that you have to worry about, you know, your yeah. work relationships, everything in English. Yeah. And it's just easier to not have to go outside your comfort zone yeah. Um, very often because I found that with Portuguese. I I dove in when we were living in Canberra about two and a half years ago and we moved into a house with four other Brazilians and I just said, fuck English. I'm just yeah. speaking in Portuguese for as long as possible now because I know that it's going to be, it's going to pay off. I want kids that grow up speaking Portuguese and it was yeah. hard at, at first, but then it became much easier because you do yeah. go over the same phrases day in, day out, day in, day out. But then for probably... After I made that video about not speaking English for 12 months, we're in brackets at home, yeah. um, it, it hasn't improved that much since then. My fluency yeah. has probably improved in terms of, and my listening, like my wife speaks to me and it's just bang, I understand and I reply, yeah. but we're always talking about the same things. Yeah. You know, I'm not suddenly going, hey, can we talk about the Hadron Collider in Switzerland and how physics, yeah. you know, there's no, so we have to go out of our way now to try and find more difficult topics. So I was yeah. thinking when I was thinking about the intermediate plateau, it's kind of like things didn't get harder, but it's more of a, a habit kind of thing. It's more of a behavioral thing that's become, it's become harder to find a challenge and yeah. then to accept it. Right. So yes. did you face that with Swedish? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I would say, I only really even acknowledged that that challenge was there in April of this year, 2020, when when I officially kind of went, nah, fuck French. Um, I'm not studying French anymore because I just, like my Swedish and my French are actually better than I made out in a video that, that where I said I'm not studying French anymore. Yeah. Um, but... Uh, I didn't, I just felt like I didn't, I wasn't very comfortable in either of them. And I really only acknowledged that I'm only going to get very comfortable in Swedish and, and really sound even to Swedes, like I've been speaking it for a very long time, if I only do that. And so that was the only, that was really the first time I'd actually acknowledged that, uh, that this intermediate plateau was like a real thing almost. Yeah. And that um, the fact you were trying to maintain or, or learn both those languages had sort of slowed you down and kept you at that stage for longer than you would desire in each, in exactly. either, either language. Right? Exactly. Yeah. So it was like, well, this is, I guess I knew the fact that like, okay, the intermediate plateau is long or like, sorry about the dog, by the way. <laughs> You That'd be silly. That. All good, man. Um, um, it adds ambience. It's a bit of atmosphere. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> bit of Australian, <laughs> Australian atmosphere. Um, yeah, so I, I guess I knew the fact that it was long and the fact that to really get my Swedish to an advanced level, I would need to do it a lot, but I still was not prepared to acknowledge that doing it a lot would mean not really doing anything else. Other, like, it's certainly not dividing my free time between French and Swedish. You just have um, to go a whole hog. Right? Yeah. 
because it's like you know if it you could definitely do that if you could do two languages if that's the only thing you had to do with your life but most people are not in that position so i was like well if i only have this much time to dedicate to languages then it should be to one language but so that's the yeah that's absolutely the um a challenge i've faced with it in that i was just getting you know one percent more comfortable with every conversation at saying basically the same things or some variation of the same things. I'd probably been doing that for like a year. Yeah. Um, and then like, again, back to the, back to the thing of watching stuff without subtitles. It's yeah, it's really only been since then. And since I started watching a lot of stuff without subtitles that I felt like, I can do that. Like yep. I, I now regularly don't, I, I regularly watch Swedish stuff without subtitles and I only use the subtitles for like study as in if I d didn't hear something, I'm like, wait, and yeah. I go back and I turn, I actually turn the Swedish subtitles on yep. and then, and then I go and look up that word or whatever. Um, and the same with reading, like I can, I can read in Swedish comfortably now but back then it was less comfortable, but it's also just I'm now sort of going out of my way to go, okay, this word, I don't, what is this word? I've never seen it before. Um, and so that's, it was really just a question of acknowledging that that, that my comfort zone was not that big. Like, yes. going like, actually, there's a lot of stuff that lies outside of my comfort zone that I've never even acknowledged because I'm just like, ah, no, that's, I'm not. And I don't want you, to. once you embrace it, it just becomes easier to get to, right? You kind of, you can, you can go one of two ways. You can either just say, okay, I'm, I can't handle f facing my ego, and and saying that I'm not as good as I would like to be, and so I'll just sit at this level forever because I can get by. Yeah. And the other one is you just say, I'm going to be thirsty for improvement until I die, and yeah. the results will speak for themselves. Absolutely. Yeah.